We've got flags and banners, and if you mind your manners, we might even get to standards and what they represent. So just take my boy's hand, and we'll both try to understand how this vexillion logic podcast could be flagged for content. Flagged for content. What's up, Vexheads, and welcome to episode 51 of Flagged for Content. It's the only podcast I meant to put out a week ago. It's also a Flags for Good podcast, and you can head on over to flagsforgood.com slash flagged for content for like the number to get 10% off any flag that you get over there, including but not limited to the show's flag. As long as you use the uh, discount code, which is flagged for content, spelled the same way. The four is the number you get it. Um, it's also a show that has a Patreon. And if you're not up to speed on what Patreon is, it's basically a kind of cool little space for creators to put out a little bit of bonus content, which for this show comes in kind of two forms. One, we have a $5 tier where you get a little extra out of the episodes. I call it flagged for bonus content. And you get things like episode 50.5 or in this case, 51.5. Uh, and they are basically little supplements that give a bigger picture of what each of my guests is up to behind the scenes or kind of just like fill out the rest of the episode in general. Maybe there was something we didn't get to, uh, for example. There's also a $10 tier, which uh, on that one you get from now on. Anyway, it's two bonus episodes per month with me, yours truly, and sometimes a guest talking way more about flags than you ever thought was possible. And you probably thought a lot was possible. Uh, and that's where I do some of my tier lists and, um, just kind of hang out. Like if you've seen any of the end results of that on Instagram or social media, whatever, that's where I do them, talk about them, etc. Anyway, it's, it's very low key. It's a fun hang. Anyway, back to the episode at hand where I talk a lot with super fan Evan Stewart about his research into the flags of Northern Ireland and all the fun political stuff that comes along with that. I think we actually, at the end, get to the bottom of a real flag issue for once. It's like right at the end. Like, you should probably listen to the whole thing just to get there. But anyway, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Evan has been a huge supporter of the show. Um, and more importantly, just like has a lot of really good insight on what makes this part of the UK and honestly, the world so fascinating uh, from a flag standpoint and really every other. And as mentioned, stay tuned afterwards on the Patreon to hear the rest of what we have to say. Anyway, oh, big breath. All that aside, let's go ahead and get into the episode. And past Andy, go ahead and take this one away. Folks, we have with us today an incredible guest. You know him from his flag account on Instagram and Blue Sky, Rowhouse Vexillology Project, you know him as an annoying Maryland flag proponent, <clears throat> or you may know him from being very active in our Discord. It's Evan Stewart! Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, man? You know, just living, living that boring suburban dad life mostly at this point. It's uh, <laughs> every day is the same, trying to keep the tiny terrorist that runs my house alive, who I love dearly, <laughs> you know. Fair enough, fair enough. And uh, so you are obviously in Maryland, given, well, not that all Maryland flag proponents are in Maryland, but your uh, intense passion for it leads me to believe perhaps that you may yeah, reside I, there. I do live in Maryland. I'm not from Maryland. I'm from very nearby. Northern Virginia is where I grew up. But I've lived in Maryland, I think, six years at this point, maybe seven. And my wife is from oh. Baltimore, which is a big part of the reason why we moved to Maryland. Sure. And I ended up here. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so, yeah, the uh, I guess the Row House of Exilology project kind of stems off of that, given the uh, propensity toward row houses where you're at. Yeah, that no, we live like... in a row house. <laughs> right, we're, right. We're yeah. to, so if anybody wants a row house in Baltimore City, I know a guy. Um, <laughs> Fair. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah. where that's exactly where it comes from. I mean, you know, it's one of the, I would say, almost unofficial symbols of Baltimore specifically. Maryland a little 
less strong a symbol, but, you know, Baltimore so strongly associated with Maryland anyway that it kind of sort of is a state. Right. Kinda, sorta, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, so are like my understanding of row houses, are they a like Baltimore thing or when I was in Philly, are those also row houses? Like who claims them or do both claim right. them, I guess? So I've given this way more thought than I should have because yeah, that I'm just is my brain off. <laughs> and I think what I've decided is it comes down to the relation, the difference between like a row house and a townhouse for me, you know, my okay, okay. comes down to age is part of it, but is not the defining factor. It comes down to like the relationship with parking. So like, ah. My okay. house is 120 years old, was built before the automobile was a thing. So we do actually have a garage in the back, but it's like eating up like half of what would be our yard kind of thing. Okay. Like basically this, a row house to me is not built with any um, or much. <laughs> Modern conveniences in my parking. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I said any modern conveniences uh, in mind. I mean, <laughs> I've got internet. <laughs> no, I, I guess know, yeah. yeah. a hundred year old, but I've got internet, so you know. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, whereas One a townhouse to me is more the developments that are like, you know, shared wall, but they're like arranged around a parking lot kind of thing. Sure, fair. Would you see, or at least I run into more in like suburban areas, right, where they're where they're a little more dense, a little cheaper housing than like single yeah. family homes, but they're still very car centric design, um, right. So I wouldn't say that the row house is like certainly unique to Baltimore. Yeah, you see them in Philly. You see them in, frankly, a lot of the East Coast cities that were um, got a lot of population, like, I don't know, probably before the war, probably before World War II. Because like there's row houses in New York, like there's brownstones in Brooklyn. I would consider I row say, like we had brownstones in Boston, which yeah. were, you know, which are related anyway. Yeah. But yeah, no, I just I don't know. It's always fascinating to me, like uh, architecture, stuff like that. And just like, you know, like city planning type stuff. Obviously, yeah. like we had Brian Stokel on and probably will again at some point. And he's one of the masters of that. But uh, yeah, I always like like you've put up a couple of pictures of your place, I think, in the discord, which people should join um, that. It's like, fun. yeah, like. They always gave me kind of like it's like Maryland King of the Hill vibes. Like you've got like the alley behind the house and stuff yeah, where yeah. you could just like throw back a couple beers and like, yeah, yeah, it looks cool. But um, oh, we're just, unfortunately, we're running out of space, which is why I got to I got to move out of the row house, unfortunately. But I'm not going to change the branding. I'm not going to change the name, even though I will be living even more of a suburban dad life going to the single family. <laughs> home. But they love you. Fair, fair enough. And speaking of running out of space, we are running out of space in this intro here. So let's get on to what's on the flagpole today. So, folks, we will, of course, do an underrated and an overrated flag. Then we will get into the main bit where we dig into the flags of Northern Ireland and their complex histories. We'll get into some activism that's actually resulted in cleaner streets and some of their efforts to get a new flag. But before we get into any of that stuff. Evan, I like to ask my guests, what's the flag that got you into flags? Yeah, so there's probably two. Um, and it's the flag of Maryland and the flag of Wales, which, you know, directly directly behind you is at least half of that answer. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will never both... own the other half of that answer. <laughs> oh, we'll break you. We'll break you. <laughs> um, and basically, you know, when I was a little kid and and got into flags probably the same way that a lot of people did. I was really into history, geography, and then kind of as a natural offshoot, it was like, oh, these things called countries have flags. These are kind of cool too. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, happening probably around like eight, nine, ten years old. We lived in England when I was 10. Uh, we lived in London. And my dad oh. is big into genealogy. And so we know that we have um, a lot of Welsh ancestry. So we actually went to Wales as part of you know, part of our time there. My last name being Stuart, we also have Scottish ancestry. Shocker. I was, that's, you know, <laughs> part of, that's pretty much the reason I had Wales and Scotland here. I was like, well, Evan is Welsh. Super. Stuart is Scottish. Super Scottish. So let's um, do that. And then, uh, you know, leave the other one for later. But yeah. Sure. Uh, but yeah, like, so when we went to Wales, when we lived in the UK, it was like, you see the Welsh flag a, a lot, you know, 
And I was like, whoa, that's got a dragon on it. That's really cool. And like, yeah, you know, we bought like the the tourist t-shirts that like have like a like a macho strong man Welsh dragon on them, like busting through the flag kind of thing. Um, <laughs> like, oh, this is really cool. Like there's like this is kind of a badass flag. On the back, did it have like the tail end of it going through? Yep, it yes. had the dragon's like... ass and the dragon's tail. Like, oh my god! I can tell you and I are around the same age because those shirts were huge yeah. when we were growing up. I had oh, one yeah. with Taz. Oh, yeah. I had yes. one with Taz. I had, I had the or I had a Taz one. There's probably multiple designs, but yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Anyway, go on. Um, yeah, whales. Yeah, <laughs> and then so right around the same time, like it's kind of hard to put exactly when. You know, I. I, most of my childhood was spent in Northern Virginia to South of DC, right. um, literally across the river from DC and Maryland. And you would never like growing up. I like never saw a Virginia flag. I don't even know if there was one in my classroom, but you cross the border into Maryland and it's everywhere. Like right. I, I was actually thinking everywhere? today as I was like driving around and like got passed by a city bus and I was like, Oh, I didn't even realize the wrap that they put on the buses, the bottom half is the Maryland flag of the entire, oh, yeah. flag, you know? And mm-hmm. so it's just, it's everywhere. And I do have some sympathy. It is very busy. I know I get people who don't like the design, but like just being <laughs> confronted by it, it was like, Oh, this is cool. Why doesn't, why don't I see the Virginia flag ever? You know, like, yes, I definitely feel you on that one. Even if I don't love, you know, love the Maryland flag. <laughs> seeing effective. it everywhere is, is super cool. It's <laughs> yeah. effective. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, For those sure. are, those are kind of the two that got me into it. And it was, like I said, it was kind of right around the same time when I just started thinking about it and ran into both of them a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say like, um, Tara always talks about like even, uh, across the border into Pennsylvania, <clears throat> like she sees Maryland flags from like, you know, folks that are, uh, I don't know, from Maryland or sure. dirty Maryland sympathizers or, you know, what have you. But <laughs> yeah. it, it was funny. There yeah. was a couple of years ago, I was driving on a road that kind of we, um, went back and forth between Maryland and Pennsylvania. Like it was right at the border, but it was just not straight. So it went back and forth. Um, so there, you know, houses along this road in Pennsylvania and houses along this road in Maryland as you went as you went on it. And sure. I probably saw, you know, it was a country road, so not a ton of houses, but I probably saw five or six Maryland flags hanging off of houses, and I didn't see a single PA flag. Yeah. Yeah, it's I guess, just, honestly, that's that's more what Tara talks about, is like, as soon as you cross the border, you see them, oh, which is yeah. pretty much what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's, uh, it's similar in Tennessee with, um, well, I mean, like, you don't see, yeah, it, Kentucky flags, you don't see anywhere, and Kentucky's yeah. one of those... Oh, yeah stealing a bet she ones like we border the most states although honestly m- well we border virginia and kentucky those have seal on bed sheets what else we got missouri's eh, you know you could argue mississippi yeah. and uh, alabama and georgia yeah they're at least different but they're anyway okay. yeah. from a design aside the point so so okay so those are your underrated uh wales and maryland or no those are those are the ones that got me into those are the ones that got you into flags not underrated as soon as i said underrated and then said maryland i was like no wait i'm sure he's (laughs) sure that's not not the case here ones that got you into flags okay yeah that makes sense um so do you want to go ahead and get into your underrated yeah sure and i will real quick let me actually drop um send you an image i was so i was thinking about this and i probably overthought it a little bit because i was like well i want to do like an actual underrated flag that like people probably haven't actually seen before you know um which is i don't know just where my brain went so the flag that i chose is fictional it is for uh the the martian congressional republic who is a um government of mars in the sci-fi series the expanse yeah um, yeah which is amazing and everyone should read it and watch the tv show um Mm -hmm. both are really good uh but specifically the one from the tv show because the one in the book is described that people have mocked up doesn't look as good to me but yeah it's i think it's a really powerful flag it's 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 pretty simple um for people not familiar with it it the background is is uh the top half is a kind of dark yellow. The bottom half is black. There's a red circle in the middle um, that isn't fully filled in. It's, you know, just like a, an outline, a pretty thick outline. 
And then kind of at the, the, the kind of like the 10 and the, I don't know, maybe the five are two smaller circles um, that are the uh, opposite color of the background they're on. Yeah, um, like counter change. It, yeah, counter change. Thank you. That was the word I was like, what is that word from heraldry? Um, <laughs> I always they, forget it. In, to use it yeah. <laughs> inside the circle is like a blue crescent. Um, and it and it represents the planet itself. I mean, you know, like the two smaller circles are the moons, Phobos and Deimos. The, mm-hmm. the main red circle is the planet itself. And the blue crescent is actually uh, representative of the terraforming project that's going on in the fictional world um, mm-hmm. to, to terraform, you know, Mars and make it a hospitable atmosphere. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love that. It's, it's, it's like my favorite sci-fi series at the moment and I'm a giant nerd. So I've read and watched a ton of sci-fi. Um, yeah. And I always just thought that flag was really well designed. I, I own it. <laughs> like I bought it and I've flown it. And then I think I freaked my neighbors right. out because they texted me like, what is that flag? And I was like, oh no, 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 I'm not a fascist. I'm not a fascist. Right. I was going to say, anytime there's a questionable flag, it's like, yeah, like I don't recognize. I don't, know. I don't know about this guy. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. No. It's uh. It's definitely a very striking flag. Like you called it dark yellow. Would it? I, it looks more orange on my screen. I would say. I. In my flag that I bought, it's more yellow. So that might be like okay, a good. digital thing. But it's it's pretty dark. I can kind of skew a little orangey, but I I would call yeah. it yellow. But yeah, I I could I could see you calling it like a yellowy orange, honestly, especially the the digital one that I kind of sent you it's well that, and it's probably my, uh, you know, Vols bias hashtag GBO. <laughs> um, Hey man, that's closer so, to Virginia yeah. tech orange than Tennessee orange. Let's be uh, real. Uh, actually, no, it, I think it's probably closer to balls. Orange, actually, I think it is <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. So yeah, so underrated. Yeah, for sure. Cause it's hardly rated. Like, um, I have been told plenty of times that I need to see the expanse and I fell asleep during episode one and I was like, I'm definitely going to come back because the part that I saw was great. Uh, <laughs> and then I just have not come back. But this is kind of, you know, maybe maybe stoked a little orange or dark yellow fire deep within me to kind of yeah, revisit that. There's some good symbolism in it. It's like it's a cool unfortunately, flag. It's the a kind cool of other two main factions. I think their flags are pretty meh. One of them is the U.N. and they literally just use the current U.N. flag which okay fair for kind of accuracy it's fiction but and the other is like a um uh decentralized uh independence movement of people who live on like uh asteroid belts and the jovian moons um Mm. called the opa the outer planets alliance and now we're totally off the rails but their flag is basically a black field with a a white anarchist a kind of thing um which I mean... <laughs> it, it goes pretty hard, but like, I don't know, it, it feels. <laughs> and and then, well, actually, that's a spoiler, so I'm not going to I'm not going to say that. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, there, there's some <laughs> decent symbolism and flags in it, but I definitely think the Martian flag is headed shoulders above anything else in that show. But even beyond that, yeah, it's a real good show, man. Real good books, yeah. too. It is very cool. Um, obviously, the uh, viewers will see it on screen. The listeners, you should be able to find this easily in the show notes or just by searching the expanse Martian flag, but it is very cool and very worth checking out if you are uh, just listening. Okay. So um, anything more to say on that one, or would you like to move on to your overrated flag? Yeah, no, let's go to my overrated flag since I know it's going to be a little controversial. Um, oh, so I want to, I want to be clear. I don't dislike the flags I'm going to say are overrated. I just think Mm -hmm. that they are truly overrated. Like they are more popular than I think they should be is is kind of the thing. And, and, and without further ado, my overrated flags are Scandinavian crosses. (laughs) Um, I just, all right. So we're going to stop the recording here and and I'm thrown out. Yeah. Shut it all down. No. Okay. All right. Defend yourself. Make your case. No, (laughs) no, it's, they're a good design. They're a powerful design, and I get why people like them. And I especially get how, for some people, there's like um, aspirational components to that. You know, like for from like a political sense of view, like oh, you know, like the the, the Nordic model is a political concept, and 
Mm. Scandinavian flags and Scandinavian crosses can in some ways kind of be used as like a stand-in for that for a certain group of of um people with some politi- certain political beliefs. Um Okay, yeah. And you know, just in general like very few countries have like you can look this up, they very few countries have negative opinions of the Scandinavian countries of the Nordic countries. Like right, it's right. kind of a world universal everyone's like, yeah, those guys up north are chill. You know, they yeah, seem to they rank high on a lot of um, a lot of things including that, yeah. So I think because of that, because there's like this, this, this general positive sentiment. And also I honestly think because they're not tricolors, like a lot of the rest of Europe is that they get a little more credit than they deserve. But also whenever there's like a design competition or just like people screwing around with, I've got a new flag for whatever my state, my province, my city, Mm -hmm. like not uncommon to see a Scandinavian cross in there. Even if it's like, Dude, you're you're in Oklahoma. Like, really? I can kind of give Minnesota maybe a little bit because of some of that, but like, well, I think even in still, Minnesota, like, I thought it made I sense. Know. I mean, not that uh, there's a lot more people to represent in Minnesota than just Scandinavian settlers, obviously. So, well, that too. I don't yeah, think it makes yeah. the most sense, but you know, if it were to make sense anywhere in the U.S. Yeah, it probably would be Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. But Oklahoma, I have not seen any like proposals for like other states that have uh like Scandi crosses like that. So yeah. That one's I mean, maybe, um, maybe I'm like hypersensitive to it. So anytime I see one, I'm like, oh fuck, another one. Um Yeah, no, I get it. So, I get it. Yeah, but, but um, I don't know. I just like anytime I just feel like anytime people talk about good crosses or good crosses, <laughs> good flags. You know, there's almost like, and the Scandinavian crosses, of course, are phenomenal and like all, all look amazing. And I'm like, I mean, they're fine. Like, I'm not saying they're bad flags. They are good flags, but like, I don't know. They're not the end all be all to me. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, I think part of, well, there's like a few reasons that I like them. Uh, and I think you did hit on one. They're not tricolors. I don't mind tricolors, but I think the yeah. crosses are a little more or can be a little more interesting. I do like a tricolor Scandinavian cross more than uh, a bicolor. Like I like Norway's over Sweden's, for example, and yeah. Iceland's over Finland's. But um, I really like the Faroese one. Uh, I thought it looked the best in the snow and those things I did on Instagram. But anyway, um, it part of it is I think I, for some reason, I like an element that's shifted toward the hoist, which obviously that accomplishes. And I also like that it kind of creates like a natural canton, like a, mm. up in the, you know, well, up where the canton is, um, where currently, like, I don't think there are any like actual countries that put anything in canton there. But like, you know, the herring salad one that I touched on in episode one and uh, a few like redesigned proposals for like, I don't know, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, I think. I think Lithuania, yeah, there's one usually has a the arms cross. up there. Yeah. Even Estonia, there's like a version that has the arms up there um, yeah. and one that doesn't. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, you've come on the show. You've talked bad about Scandinavian crosses. We've already talked about your Maryland thing. <laughs> You're pretty thin ice here, dude. Um, yeah, that's fair. You got anything more to say on Scandinavian crosses? And you can. I mean, I'm fine being on thin can. ice when I'm right. <laughs> totally fair i uh (laughs) say that to myself all the time too often probably um (laughs) all right anything more on those or should we go ahead and move into kind of the main segment here i think i'm ready to, to to move on to the you know the topic at hand all right let's go ahead and do that but before we do take a little tiny break here for some capitalism we'll be right back All right, folks, and we are back. And Evan, as I understand it, you have come here with a mission to teach us about Northern Irish flags, Northern Ireland flags. I'm, I'm not even sure how to say it, but I think go Northern ahead and like Irish, tell us, give us the rundown. Northern Irish. So, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I've kind of always been fascinated by Northern Ireland a little bit. I mean, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, you know, geography, history, it's, it's a really... 
it's a really good kind of sub um, topic of those two that matches up. And then, yeah, for sure. Like I mentioned earlier, we lived in we lived in um, London in '96, so that's pre Good Friday, right? So the troubles were winding down at that point, right? But right. There was yeah. still there was still the campaign going on, um, and we actually were on the tube one day when um, stations got shut down for bomb threats that were. I want to say called in by the IRA, but I don't actually know that. I'm just assuming based off of, you know, who who was more likely to call in a bomb threat in London, right? Probably the IRA, not one of the uh, not one of the loyalist paramilitaries, but maybe. Yeah. Um, so it's it's always been a fascinating topic to me, and with um, with like thinking more about flags and like looking more into flags since I kind of like rekindled that interest by listening to the pod and joining the uh joining the discord it was one of those things that i started looking into and realized like there is just so much going on here and like mm. even beyond i would say kind of the you know popular image that especially i think us in the u.s have where it's you know two groups of people one wearing one waving the irish tricolor one waving the, the union jack they're shouting at each other there's maybe petrol bombs being thrown see that that's mm. how you know i've been reading a lot of british and irish stuff i just said petrol bomb um yeah. not Molotov. <laughs> <laughs> um but it goes like so beyond that and so it was just a topic that that i just for my own self kind of did like a deep dive in i i i um yeah and figured yeah it might be interesting to, to other people out there i i am honestly fascinated by it but like I, i'll say like for myself I don't know a ton about Northern Irish flags. Um, I didn't specifically research it for this because I wanted kind of, you know, for you to come in and 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 school me on it in a good way. I don't know what's a good way to say, oh, yeah. that, but, you know, <laughs> educate me on it. Um, but like the the little the few things that I do know are this one behind me uh, is maybe St. Patrick's Cross. I don't know exactly. I'm sure you can tell me. And then there is the, I guess it's like some kind of Ulster flag or something, but yeah, the, the one that they band. used in uh, FIFA 2006, yeah. FIFA World Cup 2006, and probably a lot of subsequent FIFA games is, you know, kind of like, it, it looks like St. George's Cross with the yeah. Ulster kind of like uh, the red hand and whatever around it. Um, and that is the extent of what I know. So pretty much... Yeah. Everything from here is going to be uh, new to me and new to, I suspect, a lot of the viewers and listeners. No, and those those are kind of the two flags that most commonly get associated, though neither of them have official status. Right. Um, so like like you said, like St. Patrick's um, Saltier behind you, um, it's it was associated with Ireland for a while. And so that's why, like the whole the whole island, when that, um, and that's why I got incorporated into the Union Jack because Ireland, the whole island, yep. was yep. part of the United Kingdom at that time. Um, since, right. uh, you know, the independence of the Republic, it's kind of, sort of, from my reading, been more associated with like the still UK part, so Northern Ireland, and you will actually see it used in um, royal processions, especially like there are some shots of. I think it was the 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 most recent jubilee before um Lizzie died before Queen Elizabeth died. Um I think the platinum one, whatever, where they've got boats going down the Thames, one for each of the home countries, and that's the flag they fly for Northern Ireland is um oh, Okay, okay. Um so it 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 gets some I would say kind of quasi official usage. Right, um, I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, and then there there's the Ulster banner which was the flag of the government, the devolved government in Northern Ireland from the time of um, uh, partition, you know, the, the independence of the South, up until basically the beginning of the Troubles, uh, which was when uh, the Northern Irish, part, part of the Troubles was the UK reestablished direct rule and um, dis uh, disestablished the Northern Irish government. They said, you, you no longer even exist as an entity. Like it wasn't even like suspended elections. It was literally, it would be like the U S coming into Tennessee and being like, okay, state government, you no longer exist. Tennessee is now ruled directly from Washington, DC, which, Hey, ask the citizens of DC about how that goes. Um, but I don't so that flag that. was again, not even like technically the flag of Northern Ireland. It was the flag of the government of Northern Ireland. 
Um, oh, okay. okay. And like you said, yeah, it does have it basically a St. George's cross with uh, right in the middle, a six pointed star. You see a lot of six pointed stars and that's yes, uh, because that's of the six is. counties that make up Northern mm. Ireland, the six traditional counties. Um, there's the red hand of Ulster in the middle, which is a symbol associated with Ulster, which is the historical province that most that um, Northern Ireland sits entirely in, though there are, I think, three, maybe four counties in traditional Ulster that are in the Republic. So it's even though it gets used kind of interchangeably, it technically is wrong. Um, right. Yeah, the red hand of Ulster right there in the middle, which is a symbol that goes back to like the Middle Ages. And there's actually some pretty metal stories about like hands being chopped off and thrown in rivers and okay. I, don't, I don't know them so i'm not going to attempt i'm uh. going to say like do your own research unfortunately um uh. but when i was reading about it like like when it you know when the bug first planted in my head i was like oh that's metal sure. as hell um Wait, so you read about that and you were like that's metal as hell i'm not going to look that up anymore <laughs> man sleep deprivation is a hell of a drug <laughs> <laughs> fair enough back to the kids thing i guess yeah um <laughs> all right and then yeah, and then a crown that uh, that sits on top of the uh, the six pointed star, and that yeah, like yeah, you yeah. said, that gets used. FIFA uses that flag to represent the Northern Irish soccer team. Still, um, yeah, to this day, uh, golfers on PGA, Roar, uh, what's his name? Right, uh, right, McElroy or Rory, uh, Rory it's hard to say. McElroy, something like that. It's Rory McElroy. <laughs> but yeah, that's the flag that you see next to his name on scoreboard. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah. really any Northern or I should probably say most Northern Irish sports teams, that's usually the symbol that gets associated with it. Even though there's been cases of like, um, like a driver in F1 whose name escapes me, but he didn't want that flag. He wanted, um, I think he wanted the Irish tricolor mm. and, uh, they wouldn't, oh. they said, no, you're, you're Northern Irish. You're not Irish in the eyes of, um, FIA or whatever the the racing body is, so they said you're going to use this flag. So, but yeah, so, those are the two like, flags that are kind of both like most commonly associated and used in semi official ways, but like neither of them are the official flag of Northern Ireland because Northern Ireland doesn't have a flag. Right. Yeah. So, so back to that. Back to I mean, like. The last, what, four or five words you said, Northern Ireland doesn't have a flag, I guess six. Um, it's so it's so bizarre to me that I, I guess like it feeds into or maybe it stems from or whatever the political situation there. But like, I mean, obviously, Scotland has a flag. Wales has a flag. The yeah. Isle of Man has a flag like, uh, you know, like they're, they're lesser lesser or like not lesser, but like smaller political entities that have one. Yeah. And um it's just so bizarre to me, like, or maybe it's not bizarre at all. It Maybe it speaks to the just like kind of everlasting tension there that they can't even really, like you said, one was like a government flag, but that's not official or what was it exactly? It's it, not like so my understanding is that it was um, the flag of the government of Northern Ireland. Which okay. But and it's kind of put into it because it's got a crown on it. Like it is like a symbol of the crown in Northern Ireland, which is different from Northern Ireland to, again, my very American understanding of these things. Sure. Um, could be wrong, but you know, God, it's so bizarre. I mean, like even talking about sports in general, like um, I, I can't think of another country where you see a similar thing where it's like, like golf, for example, the PGA or, or I think like tennis and I, you know, a few others where they have like the, the nation's flag usually next yep. to the uh, uh, competitor. Uh, and the UK is like the only one that gets split up that way. I mean, that I can think of. Like, you you don't say which part of France or you don't say like, oh, if this person from Belgium is from the Walloon or Flemish community, you know, but yeah, the England only... gets, you know, the the St. George's, the... Yeah. It, it seems bizarre that he requested the tricolor and they wouldn't give it to him. But I guess like the other option for that is just giving all of them the union flag or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, which, which is actually kind of a good point. Very because... sticky. Sorry. No, 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 you're all good. What are you saying? I was just saying it's just it's very sticky. Like I can't like I'm not the one that's going to answer this. Obviously. No, no, Lord, no. I, uh, 
I have my opinions on the politics of Northern Ireland, but that actually doesn't feed into this really. Like, at, sure, at sure, yeah. And yeah. and my opinions, frankly, don't matter because I don't live there. It's not, you know, like not my reality. Um, but no, saying like they all should have the 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 Union Jack maybe is is kind of an interesting point because that's when I started looking into this, you'll run into a lot of things that say the Union Jack is the official flag of Northern Ireland, which like okay, that's true i get that but like that's like saying you know the, the the american flag is the official flag of new york is the official flag of california um right like yes right, those, yeah. those, those are accurate that is true yeah but it's also missing the point of like we're talking about the subdivision yes yeah um yeah yeah i so yeah, no, it's, have it's, you it's crazy <laughs> Have you been to Northern Ireland? I know I have not. I've been no, to No, I have not. I would love to go to Belfast and you know, maybe I there's, would there's too. plans for a grand trip when uh when I turn 40 in a <clears throat> years. Um yeah. <laughs> but we we'll, I don't know if I don't know if Belfast will be on the itinerary to be honest. Fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah I um yeah, been to the Republic a couple times. I knew a guy that was from Northern Ireland uh that I did that I worked abroad with. Um, and he was from a town, I, I forget what it's called. Um, but it was like, it was almost on like a little peninsula of Northern Irish control. Oh, sure. I think basically by the form of a river or something. Uh, and so it was, you know, barely in Northern Ireland. The Republic was just across basically almost any direction you could go. And, uh, this was when we were in the Republic, they were talking about, uh, after Brexit, there was going to be like. Like, is there going to be a hard border, or a soft border? Or... I don't know, man. It's I know we weren't trying to talk politics, but it's like there's a lot of politics it is, it that politics. have. Yeah, I mean, inherently and especially like recently, uh, a Sinn Féin member got elected to, I guess, like the I forget what the position is called, but like the uh, first minister or something like that yeah. of uh, of their parliament. And I don't know if it's ceremonial or if it's like if it ha I, I don't know. I'm probably speaking out of turn here, but anyway, uh, just, just going off your Northern Ireland fascinates me thing. I, I got caught up and man, it fascinates me too. It's a, it's a really interesting place and like it's had, yeah. Get, all right. So give us more of the skinny on these flags before I get too much more, uh, into the <laughs> no, no, all good. All good. I mean, on so it's like Northern Ireland doesn't have a flag, but it probably is one of the places in the country, in the world where you'll see the highest density of flags being flown. Um, okay. And, and again, it, there, from what I, from what I understand, there is some truth to like, you know, the Irish tricolor and the, um, the union Jack being the two that you'll see. And a lot of that goes to, um, in some ways marking territory. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, if you have a, if you have a Republican or what there, there's a, there's a research term. It's, um, Catholic nationalist Republican, or if you have a Protestant unionist loyalist um, neighborhood, you know, you will fly predominantly the tricolor or the Union Jack. Um, there's other flags that get thrown in there too. Right now, I mean, I think in the Discord I dropped in a few days ago, uh, uh, NPR report about how you'll see Palestinian flags and nationalist yeah. areas. That's actually a tie that goes back decades. And then similarly, in unionist areas, you'll see the flag of Israel, which again is something that goes back decades. I was reading a study from 2015 um, from Queens College in Belfast, and it mentioned that the flag of Israel was like a de facto unionist flag at this point. Like, and that was eight years ago, before you know, kind of the current um, the, the current round of violence that we're seeing in Gaza. You know, yeah. So, like, there are other flags in addition to like organizational flags like some of the historical irish flags associated with like um the easter uprising the starry plow that kind of thing the starburst yeah or or um flags associated with specific paramilitary groups and again a lot of that has to do to my understanding with like marking territory but one of the one of the interesting things is you know um that i that i read about is they also use murals to mark territory i mean if you've watched Dairy Girls or if you've watched like right, I, anything I was just gonna Island, say. Yeah, yeah. You'll see the murals, right? There's the there's the welcome to free dairy that's really, really and famous. But there's there's a ton of them. 
They're all yeah. And dairy is interesting enough in its own sense because, like you know, the yeah. unionists call it London dairy, and yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. It's uh, yeah. even though even though there's a unionist organization called the Apprentice Boys of Dairy, it is not the Apprentice Boys of London Dairy. It is the Apprentice Boys of Dairy. But anyway. well, you know, <laughs> some things are harder to change than others, and apparently. Uh, the name of that little group is harder to change than a town's name and your I guess I guess mind or your records. Um, anyway. But one of the one of the interesting things when you know I was uh reading up about like the kind of flags as marking territories, yeah. Um is A, it became more common actually after Good Friday. So there was a surge in flags being flown publicly right around the year two thousand, Good Friday was 98 99 i forget exactly but it was you know that that time period Mm -hmm. um and then another surge in 2012 especially in in unionist neighborhoods after uh the belfast city council reduced the number of days that they were going to fly the union jack from 365 to a prescribed uh 18 which is kind of like the legal requirement in the rest of the uk is government building the federal holidays kind of thing like uh i yeah, like 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 um, birthdays of various people in the royal family, um, some holidays yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, and that actually that set off riots um, in Belfast, where like some pretty violent protests and like uh, threats made against um, some of the political parties who were in charge of the Belfast City Council at that point, and had pushed it through. Mm-hmm. Who were a combination of uh, nationalist parties, but also what are called cross community political parties that specifically do not take stances on the nationalist <laughs> and unionist issues and are, are trying to attract people from both um, communities. It's like uh, the neutrals in Futurama. It's, <laughs> it's you There's know, they're, dirty I, I don't know their politics that well, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. Tell my wife I said hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, as part of like kind of some of the territory marking that goes on with the flags, right, there's actually right. was another similar again to the, to the murals, another form that kind of a territory marking that came in with it, where they would actually paint the um, street curbs uh, to again, mark territory, you know, are you Republican area? Are you in a unionist area? And so in Republican areas, you're painting it basically the tricolor, just those repeating three colors and, you know, green, white, orange, green, white, orange, green, white, orange, okay, just in yeah. blocks down the curb. And then in unionist areas, it's red, white, blue, although I think the order is blue, white, red. Um, but I, it's, I mean, you know, it's just those three colors painted over and over and over in some repeating yeah. pattern. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, this led to the development uh because technically that is, you know, defacing public property. The curb is not owned by whoever owns the house or the, like it's owned by the council who owns the street or whatever yeah. government body owns the street. Um, it yeah, led to the development of street curbs that uh, you can run a street sweeper over it and it'll take paint off. Like they, the paint doesn't adhere well. So, okay, so they that's literally just meant. run the street sweepers over it and take the paint off, which I thought was like a really With funny solution to a really specific problem. Okay, yeah, yeah. What well, yeah. That is definitely like um it, well, yeah, I guess like just an innovation in city planning more or less. <laughs> it's uh I think like you said off air like uh there's that like <laughs> like coating or whatever you can put on buildings or paint or something where like oh, yeah. if people are like pissing on it or something it's just like hydrophobic i guess is the word yeah yeah um yeah but like having a street sweeper be able to wipe it off is like a whole different like kind of I know. layer to that it's definitely i mean like yeah it's it's one extra thing you have to plan around and are they equal opportunity uh, street sweepers or do we know? Oh man, I, may, maybe it depends on who's driving the street sweeper that day, you know? I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I wonder if it's uh, someone with Republican loyalties, if they, well, maybe we leave this one or something. Yeah, leave this one here. Don't, you know, or maybe if, uh, yeah. because if it's especially like a, a paramilitary group marking territory, as opposed to just kind of people being like, Hey, this is maybe you leave that curb alone, you know. Right. 
So uh, there's got to be like, I mean, thing. sorry. Yeah, no, go in, go into, uh, go into that. Yeah. So one of the other interesting things about, um, especially, and, and even still relatively currently, I, um, especially about unionist paramilitaries, like marking territory, kind of marking, Hey, this area is, you know, is, a is our, is our stronghold. Um, because there are apparently very fierce rivalries between unionist paramilitary groups that, that maintain to this day. Um, they used to put up a ton of flags and would just like every single flagpole or every single light post, every single fence, every, you know, everywhere they could, they put up a flag. Everywhere you could put a flag, they would put a they'd flag. Put a flag. Yeah. Um, okay. But they didn't maintain them very well. So they'd start ah. to fall apart and they'd be tattered and they'd look like crap. And so in an effort to, and I think, I think they use this word in the, in the Queens college report I was reading an effort to professionalize <laughs> they started putting up fewer flags, but maintaining them better. Okay. Yeah. And like, Track. which, which is just, it, which kind of made me laugh. Cause I'm like, dude, you're like, I mean, okay. It's not nearly as violent as it once was. Like, are you still a terrorist organization? If you're not carrying out violent acts, like, maybe <laughs> not, but like, you know, you're still like, you're still I like your early stuff. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it bangs, man. Wait, no, no, no. Yeah. Maybe that's not the right word. Maybe bangs is not the right word in contact. Uh, um, maybe. But it just it, it made me chuckle because it's like you still call yourself a paramilitary organization and like you're like, no, 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 we need to professionalize. We need to wear suits and whatnot and everything. And which, although, yeah. you know, that's what Jerry Adams did going from the IRA to Sinn Féin. So, I mean, it, well, that for one. And I think it's just taking the uh, the emphasis off of the military and onto the para. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, well, paramilitary work adjacent as in like at one point we stood next to one so you know yeah. it's yeah. fine it's whatever no, we've totally be armed it's fine it's fine yeah, yeah, yeah no i um so back to the like the uh the curb painting and stuff like do you know or like i mean maybe we can look up uh collectively uh have they just like adapted to that like there's got to be like a certain point where if you're painting on the curbs and then the street sweepers come and just like make it all go away well you're like well shit i'm not spending any more money on uh you know spray paint or whatever yeah yeah you know like obviously murals are they take longer than well i don't know doing a whole curb seems like it takes a long time too unless you have yeah, a yeah. decent sized crew you're bent over that would hurt my back i guess you have a decent sized crew that does it. i don't know but anyway uh yeah like do you know if they've like adapted or or is that like kind of like the latest i don't yeah like if that's maybe like the latest in the in the cat and mouse game yeah um, i guess it's all I, be... I didn't i didn't run into that um it seemed it seemed less common and less of an issue than actually like the flying of like excessive and public flags which are literal yeah. terms i've actually run into um right. but there's actually that does kind of tie into another interesting facet that i ran into a couple places where the and this is this is cross community this is both you know the the, the nationalist and the unionist side um the type of neighborhood matters for how much flags are flown um and how how prevalent that is and to a lesser extent, um, curb painting as well, but not not quite as much. And what I mean by that is basically um, neighborhoods where the majority of people who live there are renters will have more flag flying than neighborhoods where the majority of people are homeowners. And the answer for that given by, um, I keep referencing it, the, the, the Queens College paper, yeah, yeah. was that it affects property values. And when you're a renter, Lower yeah. property values are actually probably good because then your rent might be down. When you're an owner, higher property values are good because of the investment, you know, and that whole thing. So it was kind of an interesting, almost class divide there, you know. But not even, but, but not even just just specifically class because they actually did interviews um, based off of class and stuff too in that paper. Uh, but just like the, you know, who who owns the building you live in, and apparently in Northern Ireland. Um, well, before 2020, anyway, mm -hmm. they were saying like more people were becoming homeowners 
So even though there was this push, especially in Belfast, for like flying more Union Jacks because of uh, yeah. the decision by the council about 10 years ago and all that, there was this countervailing force of people being like, yeah, yeah, I'm a unionist, but like my house needs to appreciate. So like, we're not going to be doing all that. Right. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. I, I found, I it, never I found it, it very, very interesting. <laughs> I guess I never thought of it in those terms as far as like, uh, yeah, well, like home ownership. And now, and now I'm like trying to flash back through everything that I've known from any city I visited or lived in or whatever. And it does track, I think, pretty much like universally. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. And I guess yeah, like was... wrapped into that, like you said, is kind of like a bit of a class divide, too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's weird because like, I mean, I don't know, like my gut instinct when it's like a class divide of people flying flags and not flying flags is like, OK, it makes sense that like the working classes and stuff would. I don't know. Well, now now I'm of two minds about it. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it really just is a rent thing. Because <laughs> I can see working classes being either pro or anti flag, not the band. But, well, uh, it's it's actually funny because in interviews they did middle class, which this isn't this is, again, a bit separate from like the homeownership thing, but middle class Protestants um, tended to be more negative about flying flags, whereas working class Protestants actually tended to be neutral, like they didn't seem to care. Mm. There were more that supported, but the plurality was kind of in the meat of the of the bell curve around the like neutral or slightly supportive or actually slightly annoying was was you know <laughs> was um one of the bigger groups so it's it's interesting like it does kind of be reflected in attitudes too right like the 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 middle class who more likely to own homes they're like well yeah flying flags are just friggin annoying and working class even though they definitely have more supporters even them it's still kind of just towards the like I mean, this is fine, I guess. Like, I don't really care. Like, that was the most common response for working class Protestants. Yeah. Was I, was the study um, only on, like, a certain type of flag? Or was it, like, do you fly a flag at all? Any type of flag it, kind of thing? Yeah. So the, the exact question is, what is your general feeling on the issue of flags on lampposts? Flags on lampposts? Yes. Which is how they would obviously a specific kind of flying of flags that like we don't really do in the U S I was going to say, yeah. um, but it, it is, it is the kind of like terror again, to my that'd be the most like, common way to do it there kind of thing. Yeah. Like it's the territory marking way too. It's the very public, very like in your face, you know, as opposed to maybe something on a house that's a bit further back from the road or something like that. Gotcha. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I'm going through all sorts of different things in my head. Like I was going to say, like when I was in like, you know, more like working class uh, neighborhoods of like Philly last time, like there were a ton of flags, but a lot of them were like, you know, eagles flags and shit. They right. weren't like no, anything yeah, inherently yeah. political in one direction or the other. It was uh, eagles, flyers. I mean, well, there was only a couple of fly. It was eagles. You know, it was football season. Um, yeah. And well, no. And the Phillies were in the playoffs. So there were a few Phillies uh, flags, too, I think. But. Yeah, yeah. But and that was yeah, yeah. But that was, you know, non political flag. So I guess it's a little bit different, especially given like what you said, it's like on lampposts and like marking territory kind of thing. That's yeah, that's a whole different kind of animal. Anyway, um, I think it's probably good here to take a brief break and we'll get into the rest of this right after that. <laughs> And we are back. So, okay. You said there aren't technically official flags of Northern Ireland, but from what you sent me in our notes and everything, uh, there are official flags for some things in Northern Ireland. So like, do you want to touch on what those are and like what their flags or badges or whatever, maybe? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So, and, um, and to be clear, when I say this, I, I mean, post good friday like flags have been adopted since the good friday agreements um 
which okay, right. is an important marker to me because it's it's you know it's attempt to be more inclusive to um, both of the main groups in Northern Ireland. But yeah, there are two specific flags, um, official symbols, what have you, that have been adopted post uh, post Good Friday, um, and they're the 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 badge and flag of the police service of Northern Ireland. The flag is literally just a seal on a bed sheet, basically. So they're kind of the one and the same. And then the um, sure. flag of the uh, Assembly of Northern Ireland, which is their new de- uh, devolved government, their new devolved legislature. Um, so right. I'll start okay. with the police badge first, because it's the more complex of the two. <laughs> yes, for sure. For um, sure. From what I'm seeing here. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 kind of it's kind of wonky. Um, so it's. It's round. There's some like star details around it. I don't. There's probably some uh, uh, heraldic way to describe those that I don't know. But um, the meat and potatoes of it is in the center circle, which is green. Um, in that circle is a six pointed stars, the six counties. Uh, the circle. There's another smaller circle inside that star that has Saint Patrick's cross, and then in um, the triangles basically that are formed between. Yeah, the six pointed star it. and the Go outer through. circle. There are six different symbols, mm-hmm. and this definitely gives me a very designed by committee feel, especially <laughs> when you read the descriptions because the symbols are, um, which I think. Wait, let me check to see if this is actually going around. I think at least a, like three of these are also emojis. So, yeah, I mean, you're probably right. Um, oh, so there's no, the scales like, of justice. At least four, maybe five. <laughs> maybe every- yeah, I mean, the scales of justice, that's definitely an emoji. I've definitely seen that in there. It might be all um, of them. There might be a harp. I don't know. I think you might be right. Spoiler. <laughs> so you've got the scales, which, okay, it's the police, kind of obvious why that's there. Uh, you've got a torch, which is supposed to represent enlightenment and a new beginning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, an olive branch representing peace. Pretty obvious why that's in there. Um, there's a shamrock, which is traditionally associated with St. Patrick, which at least in America we associate more so, or at least I do, I should say, with the Republic. But apparently it's more of an all-island symbol than specifically mm-hmm. a Republic symbol because um, he is the patron saint of the island, not the Republic. Well, and it's uh, St. And Patrick's Cross the, the thing in the middle there. The shamrock, there's some tie into the to the Trinity as well, right? Like that's kind of part of why that symbol is right. associated with yeah. it to begin with. Um, and the last two symbols, which uh, uh, kind of make me chuckle, there's a crown, which is a traditional royal, a traditional unionist symbol, but it is specifically mm-hmm. not St. Edward's crown. So this is a crown... That does not represent the British sovereign, but it's a crown, and we all know it is to represent the British sovereign and the Unionists. But it is technically not that. So it's a compromise, right? is what it is. And then okay. similarly, like so many things that I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the harp, which is a traditional Irish symbol, but it is specifically not the. And I'm going to butcher this. The Brian Brow harp, which is a symbol of the Republic. But if you see a harp in Northern Ireland, that's the harp. You know what I mean? Like, so it's it, th- yeah. those two kind of make me chuckle because it's very obvious what they're doing there. Like the legalistic, like, no, 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 it's not that. It may look like that, but it's not that. Right. Um, right. Yeah. It's... But yeah, I mean, this was this was agreed upon. And like, I'm not saying it's necessarily the best symbol. And I actually think it makes for a bad flag. Because it literally is just the badge on a like kind of forest green oh, sure. background, yeah. but this was agreed upon and is relative, from what I can tell, is like not a controversial symbol. I mean, any more so than any symbol of a police force is going to be controversial. Like it's controversial at all, sure. <laughs> only because it's associated with the police, not because it's associated with you know the 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 unionists or the loyalists particular or the sorry the unionists or the nationalists particularly, right? Right. Yeah, it's um well, all right. So I'm here to make it controversial. I got something go to say it, about this it, one. Do it. So let's go let's go full fucking like QAnon or whatever about it <laughs> and just get really weird. And what I'm seeing is that St. Patrick's cross in the middle, right? So it's connecting 
two things to two things. Oh. It's connecting the crown to a torch and it's saying, let's fucking burn the crown. Let's torch this whole thing. And it's connecting <laughs> the harp to the uh, uh, shamrock. So it's saying like, all right, we should all be the same island, torch the crown. And that's <laughs> probably going to get cut. <laughs> <laughs> I, are, are you big in Northern Ireland? Is that maybe going to be a profit problem? Like what are, what are your East belt? I don't know. I mean, it shows me, it shows me my listening traffic and I don't, I we're decent sized. Like, you know, UK is the second most, but, and it shows me cities. I don't remember if any Northern Irish cities are there. But hey, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to inc- they can't get me for inciting a riot, right? I mean, they probably could try. No. I don't know if that's extradition worthy, but there's one way the only one way to find out, really, you know. Yeah. Hey, uh legislative council, which whose flag we're about to describe, come at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And while they're coming at me, uh, before they get here, let's go ahead and yeah, do you want to describe this? other uh what was it post good friday flag you said yeah yeah um so this is for the the flag of the northern iron assembly which is the new devolved government that came into being Mm -hmm. um after the good friday accords right because like i said earlier there'd been direct rule from basically the beginning of the troubles until the good friday Accords, some 30 Mm -hmm. years um Mm -hmm. so i prefer it absolutely to the police flag it's still not my favorite flag but i do think with some tweaks it would work a lot pretty well um, so it's, it's a white field. It's got a thin blue border around it. Kind of, a every, every one I've seen, it's a pretty light blue. Um, and then in the middle, there are six, um, flax flowers. Again, six representing the six counties. Okay, I was wondering what those were. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think it's six. Flax. Yeah. I might be messing up the flower, but I know, um, it would, the flower was specifically chosen because of the historical ties to, um, linen and cloth manufacturing in Northern Ireland. Um, well, then so that, I think, yeah, that, it makes sense. um, and they, they have like a common root, like all six flowers, all six plants are coming out of one point And then they kind of fan out to take up, uh, the majority of like the middle of the flag with that blue border around it. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's pretty solid, honestly. I think the flowers they chose, those designs are a tad more complex than I would prefer. I think you simplify yeah. those designs just a hair and you've got a pretty decent flag that like, I mean, if this were to be like the new national flag for Northern Ireland, I think it it would look from like a purely aesthetic standpoint, you simplify it a little bit and like, awesome, cool. Like, I think that might work. Yeah, yeah. It Maybe. doesn't feel British though. That's I don't the know. Thing. It, it doesn't what? feel British to me though. It doesn't feel like it would be like a flag for a constituent country of the UK. No, it doesn't to me either. It, but it honestly feels like it feels like an American state flag almost to me for some reason. I think maybe I'm thinking of like. I don't know, like old Mississippi flags or something. Oh, and, uh, those are, those are flowers. Those are like, not <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the implications there are terrible. Um, but yeah, I know. I don't know. Like, yeah. I guess if I saw the simplified version of it, or if there were some kind of like competition to make a simplified version of this, sure, sure. Uh, one could vote in or something. I don't know. Maybe Alex could put that, or someone could put that together. Uh, Smix. I don't know. Max, what's up? This is another shout out heavy episode. I know you haven't heard the most recent one yet because I'm just about to release it. But uh, yeah, (laughs) there's a few shout outs in that one, too. But yeah, no, this one's this one's interesting. You definitely get the symbolism of the six. Um, And you said the the symbolism of the flax is because it's it's, a you know, a textile uh, thing. Yeah. Is there any symbolism other than that? Like, is there anything with the flax having five petals that you found or is it like just kind of a that's just what not, flax looks like kind of thing. No, not that I found. The only other thing, and this is this is getting into like my theories, um, is I mean, we're I su- getting into theories I, tonight. Let's do it. <laughs> I suspect that blue, that shade of blue was chosen very intentionally. Uh-huh. That is not the blue 
on the Union Jack. It is much, much paler. Mm. It is much, much um, less vibrant is maybe not the right word. I don't know. My color theory terminology is crap. So um, I would not be surprised if in those conversations, you know, that shade was a was a big point. And I'm honestly, like, now that I'm thinking about it a little more, kind of surprised they went with a blue. Like at all? Yeah, but I mean, you can't go with green, really. You can't go with orange. You, I mean, why can't you go with orange in some kind of, uh, in some kind of way? It's the what? orange man. It's, Pro- it's Protestant. It's the orange But man. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know like the, the Irish tricolors, like, you know, the green and the orange are the Catholics and Protestants and the white is the peace between them kind of thing. And I guess... They don't want to align them. Yeah, I guess you're right. You don't want to align yourself with either side, even though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Historically. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you do both and like are alternating flowers, like you might get into a situation where people are like, oh, this represents this county that's predominantly nationalist. You know, this represents that one that's predominantly loyalist. And which, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's a whole kettle of fish, although maybe not the worst if there's equal number of both, you know. I imagine like, yeah, it's got to be tough. Like you've got to start getting into shades of a color when it's like, all right, if we don't want to use any of the union flags colors, which is red, white, and blue, that uh, Jamaica is the only country flag in the world that doesn't have a single one of those. Um, like, so we can't use red, white, and blue. Um, we don't want to use, and like normally when you can't use those, you default to weird colors like orange. We're like, we can't use that <laughs> or green. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, fuck, we can't use that. We don't just want to do a white flag because obvious reasons and uh what does that leave us with purple nah let's go with a lighter blue (laughs) yeah 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 and i will say like it does give like a vibe of like historical um textiles to me the shade they chose right like that does look like oh that would be like a shirt oh yeah 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 you know yeah for sure so, all right. So this is the one of the, uh, would you say it's the legislature, like the they're devolved, like assembly. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. and have you seen this one? Like, I mean, I'm sure I can look it up and I can put it in the video version, but like, are there instances of it flying or being like hung behind them as they legislate as legislatures are want to do? Or? I've not, um, I've seen pictures of it flying. Um, oh, well that's even, I mean, you know, that's better. Yeah, let me drop it. And it looks, I actually think it looks okay, but I think the the busyness really hurts it even more when it's in motion, or the complexity is maybe a better way to phrase that. Um, oh, plus this one looks like it's been frayed, the uh, fly Oh, side. yeah, it's missing uh, on, yeah. The, on the fly. Huh, good eye, good eye. Of course, a Tennessean would notice that because your eye just always, what's going on on the fly? It's got to be weird. Um Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, but no, I haven't actually <laughs> run into it like in a press conf- a, a press conference photo or right. something like that. Um, I don't actually know how often it gets used. Cause That's I don't, what I was mainly wondering, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that one I got used long enough for the fly over to... the legislative building. Yeah. I don't think they fly like any flag over that building. Really. Right. So it seems... Yeah. Huh. So Northern Ireland, huh? <laughs> a pretty weird, place, be weird, including four flags. Yeah, that is that is interesting if they don't fly. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to look that up and maybe if there are any instances I can find, I'll put them both yeah, in the, show notes and, uh, the video version. But I just know that every picture I've run into of, I think it's the name of the castle is Stromfront, Stormfront. It's um, it's got a very oh, British God. sounding name. <laughs> Better not be Stormfront. <laughs> or no, it, oh wait, no, yeah, it is not that. Um, <laughs> but the the you know the name of the building that's kind of the colloquial name of the assembly. Every single photo I've seen of that building, there's two giant empty flagpoles on the top. Oh really? Like every picture, yeah. they're just empty, but they're there. Oh wait, is this one? This one, I see one flag. Hold on, hold on. Late breaking research. Oh, and I can't enhance, see the other flag. Enhance? Pole. No, it's not. The other flagpole isn't visible. What's at the top? But yeah, most pictures I've seen, was um, I just dropped it in the chat. You can see there's two big flagpoles on top of the building. 
Uh, Most pictures I've seen, they're empty. One's the Union flag, and the other one's... Who knows? Mystery. It does literally say no entry on it, too. Anyway, okay. (laughs) Yeah, no, that is... uh, I mean, especially given the context of everything else you've said, as far as Northern Ireland not having an official flag... They've had, you know, the St. Patrick's cross. They've had the Ulster hand cross thing that FIFA uses and other like international sporting things use. Mm-hmm. Um, this group has one. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's it's uh, it almost. Yeah, I don't know. Pretty much anything else I'm going to say is going to be on repeat, but it almost seems like they don't want one. Like they well, kind of like, can see the writing on the wall. I don't want to be, you know, a uh, soothsayer here, but uh, I would imagine in my lifetime, we don't need to be talking about Northern Irish flags anymore. I hope. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. But I mean, yeah. The, despite the political situation in the future, you know, the one the one at the moment. Um, yeah, they're not having a flag. Oh, yeah. is, is kind of weird for constituent countries. And like in in. um the paper I read, they, they asked people like, do you want a, or let me find the exact wording. Cause it was, it was like, do That's you want worth a new noting. flag that uses a new- neutral yeah. symbol? Let me find the exact word. He use a symbol possibly perceived as neutral, e.g. the red hand to represent Northern Ireland. And this is from 2015. So obviously a lot of date, but a slim majority 50.2% said this was a very good or a good idea. Now, another 20% said neutral. So you've only got 30% who said it's a, you know, combined, who said it's a bad or very bad idea. So wait, so you like have 20%... Level... Go ahead. There, there's, but there's 20% of people who said they were neutral on using a neutral symbol? The true neutrals, yes. The the exact middle of that alignment uh, um, uh, These square. Mother- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right sorry continue with your uh queen's college study <laughs> okay so yeah, yeah I mean, it was like, 50 and then 20. there's a little bit of support there and they've tried like there was there was like a competition in 2000 so basically immediately post um or not a competition sorry there was an idea put forward for a a, a competition kind of immediately post good friday um it never got off the ground right there were talks in 2013 led by an American um, diplomat that involved all the um, political parties, basically, that collapsed after like six weeks or something. Um, mm-hmm. It's actually it was it was hilarious reading those news articles because it was all the, it was the very standard like things are going great we're making good progress things are going great and then like a day later and every single party is pulled out <laughs> <laughs> like so things weren't going great. Um, yeah. And there was a report in like 2021 that said, I mean, again, the most like government report of government reports, like, hey, we should probably get a new flag. Um, but it just, that's all it said. It didn't like outline a, like, here's maybe a process to do that. Here's consideration. Like it didn't, it didn't go even a step further into like, what could it look like? What can we draw upon? Maybe these like, you know, like those relatively national symbols that the police and the legislature have that are post good Friday that are kind of by definition compromised symbols. Like what can we learn from those processes? What can we go forward? Is the red hand maybe a good place to start? Cause it's seen as relatively neutral. Like it's just, it's funny cause it keeps cropping up every now and again, but it never goes anywhere. So I have no reason to think it will ever go anywhere. To be so honest. it was like kind of like a blanket thing of like just the idea of should we get a new flag at all not should it be one of these things or like if we were to like it would maybe be one of the you know whatever yeah i'm like i guess like in northern ireland there are a few more like historic ones to fall back on rather than like Mm -hmm. a lot of them being completely new designs where like obviously maine has the 1901 and um some of the other states, you know, uh, the North Star had been used in Minnesota forever, and then yeah. they chose a tragedy of a flag after that. But it is, um, yeah, I guess it's different when you have like a little bit of precedent to kind of fall back on or like nudge people toward in a sense or something. But yeah, I mean, if they didn't, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's a priority, I guess, then. 
Yeah, and I think I think that's that's a big part of it, honestly. Like it's not seen as a priority. I mean, the reality is Northern Ireland, as contentious as it is, and as much as it can like absorb um an outsized place in like to some extent like his you know, recent history and popular culture, it's like under two million people. It would be a small US state, yeah. right? Like it's not and it's not like terribly economically important to the UK. It's not even terribly like politically important, like other than Theresa May needed it, needed one of the unionist parties to become prime minister. So like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like I just, I think you're right. I think it's not a priority. And I do think that if they were to do it, it would need to be run incredibly well because I think there would be the real danger of like design by committee, which we see in the police badge. So in my opinion, like, that's a very, very busy symbol. And admittedly, it's a badge, not a flag. So there's, you know, you're looking at different yeah. things. And I think, like, it functions okay in that um, in that arena as a badge. But, like, you know, if you're trying to get so many symbols in there, like, okay, obviously you've got the two, the two predominant groups. Okay, so do we try to get symbols for both? Do we, again, maybe go, like, with the neutral symbol? Like the red hand, well, is that problematic? Because there are like unionist paramilitary groups that's literally called the Red Hand Defenders. You know, yeah. Ulster yeah. Yeah. is not Northern Ireland, but the people that call Northern Ireland Ulster tend to be unionists. Like a lot of the unionist paramilitaries use the word Ulster in their name. So like Yeah. Leaning on that imagery with that, like I I just and to be clear, like this is where I really don't even know. Because it's just like I don't have any of the on the ground context, right? <laughs> right. I think like my thought on that again, same as you, not having the on the ground context, but like I guess just like the more we talk through this, the more I'm kind of thinking like, okay, if you are super uh, loyalist, unionist, whatever, then you are more likely to just be pro union flag, like union flag everywhere uh you know basically by virtue of you being unionist you want that union flag everywhere so it makes sense to me and the flip side of that would be if you are not a unionist you probably don't want any kind of symbol for what you consider to be quote I, i'm maybe putting this badly but like stolen territory like something mm -hmm. like that i'm a state that was taken for you from you so, like, if you're not a unionist, you probably just want the tricolor everywhere. If you are a unionist, you don't really have an incentive, I wouldn't think, to create a flag specifically for that. You just want the, well, I'm on repeat again, but, like, yeah, the union flag. So, I don't know. It seems like a, 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 a an interesting dichotomy. Like, um, neither side really has any incentive or motivation to make one. And so it seems yeah. like it's just kind of a uh, a dream of the casuals or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, no, I think I honestly think you're 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 probably right because I think in I think there's a viewpoint from certain members of both parties that like recognize like if we adopt a new symbol that represents the whole of the of of the of the country then like that is in some way giving up something, you know, like right. the, the unionists, like there's, there's the quote, the unionists are more British than the British. Right. Yes. And, yeah. and like the nationalists, it's like, well, we're Irish. Like this is our symbol. Like, so I can, I, that's a really good point. I kind of hadn't thought about, like, I do think that that, that might be part of it, especially, I mean, not all of them, because I think there are plenty of practical right. people who are like, kind of regardless of how you feel like this is the political reality on the ground. This is what we need to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Like for day sure. to day to just get by, but yeah, on the fringes who sometimes the loudest, you know, often the loudest, it'd be like, yeah. no, we, we have like, you know, we have a symbol for Northern Ireland. It's either the union Jack or the tricolor. Yeah. 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 Just no incentive on either side. Uh, and like you said, yeah, like in the middle people that are kind of like more casual that, yeah, for sure. But man, I think, uh, I think we hit the nail on the head and I think we probably need to start winding down here. Um, 
do you have a little bit of time to stick around on Patreon and talk about, I yeah. know you want to talk about like the four counties flag and a couple other like interesting tidbits that we didn't quite get to here. Um, yeah, got no, time. absolutely. Absolutely. We can do okay. it. Let's do it. Perfect. Okay. Well then, yeah, let's go ahead and start to wind down. Um, if you want to give us, you know, like where can we find you, the row house vexillology project, all that good stuff and, uh, and follow you. Yeah, no. So, um, like you said at the top, you know, Rojas Vexillology Project uh, on Instagram, on Blue Sky. It's honestly just me posting my flag collection. It's really with like a little oh, yeah. blurb. Um, I think I think the description is on both of them is like one man's excuse to grow his flag collection. Um, <laughs> it is it is taking a brief hiatus now. There will be no new posts for a little bit because, as I said, we are moving. So the flags have been packed away already. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got to figure out where the flagpole goes, going to go up on the new house. And, but, you know, we probably won't see anything until like April. Um, okay. but I try to get a new flag up there every three to four to five weeks. Um, yeah. and then, yeah, honestly, the most reliable place to find me is in the discord. I spend way too much time on that. Do not tell my boss. Um, <laughs> definitely. No, don't, don't tell my boss. That's and I would say, don't tell my wife, but she knows. So that's, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, yeah, um, yeah, you are a dynamo in the Discord. Um, definitely a, a uh, it's it's fun like playing the uh, um, flaggle game against you and stuff. We usually yeah. end up tying, but on the off chance that we don't tie, honestly, it even feels good to lose. Like, well, not not good. I, just, I think you win more often. Than, I think you or win. I mean, there's definitely been a couple cases. Oh, you've been wins and like, close now. <laughs> Taking, taking a, taking like three guesses to get something. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to drop that in today. Like, that's just, we're not, we don't need to acknowledge this. Right. Here. So all the days I see you not posting, it's because not you all, took... not all, most. Mm. That's interesting. Anyway, if anyone else, if this sounds like fun to you, <laughs> and I can't imagine that it doesn't, if you are still listening at this point, um, then definitely hop in the discord. I am going to start putting the link to it directly in the show notes. Um, as well as I'll go ahead and do the show's plugs, but uh, our link tree will also be in the show notes, but it's just link tree. I think you can get there by typing linktree.com slash flagged for content all spelled out. Um, and yeah, on any at base platform, we are at flagged for like the number content. Uh, again, yeah, check the show notes. If you're an audio listener, I'm going to have like more and more links down there every week. So um, well, maybe not more every week. I'm going to have a bunch this week and moving on that same bunch. But anyway, I think that is pretty much all that I had to say and more. Uh, so time to wrap this up, but I will readily admit I don't have anything at all prepared for it. So Evan, uh, anyway, you can take the reins here and kind of finish this out. Yeah, no, I think, um, I think I'll just say everywhere. Everywhere deserves a flag, uh, including Northern Ireland. Simple, short, and sweet. I love it. Thank you all so much for listening, for watching, everything else, and we will catch you all on the fly side. <laughs> all right. That was fun. No, that was good. Hell yeah, dude. Do you want to go straight into... Um, I can mark it here for myself. Do you want to go straight into the uh, little bonus bit? Yeah, yeah.